Hello, Dr. J here of the drj.com and the 2020forum.com. So we know that high blood pressure is a known risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And when you have high blood pressure, changes do occur in your arteries. Uh, the more poorly controlled your blood pressure is, the more changes that are going to happen in those arteries. So, uh, because those changes are happening at multiple sites, so you're going to have changes happening in the brachial artery, which is the artery that supplies blood to the arms. You're going to have changes happening in the carotid artery, which is the one that supplies blood to the brain. You're going to have changes happening in the femoral artery, which is the artery that supplies blood to the legs. You're also going to have changes happening in other smaller vessels as well. Now, is it possible that a difference in the state of health between the right brachial artery and the left brachial artery could that give us a clue as to the state of health of other arteries as well? So that is what uh, today's video is about. Now, I will encourage you to watch the entire video because I'm going to give you a task to perform at the end of the video and this is a life-saving task and uh, it's very important that uh, you perform the task so uh, what inspired today's video well this video was inspired by a publication that came out very recently actually less than a month ago and it was published in hypertension journal and uh, let's have a look at it now the study was titled Associations between systolic interarm differences in blood pressure and cardiovascular disease outcomes and mortality. So that was the title of uh, the study. Now, this is not the first study to look at interarm blood pressure differences. There have been some other studies previously, but there's a difference uh, between this one and the previous ones. And here is why I'm gushing over this uh, particular study. It is a first meta-analysis that pulled 24 total studies together, okay? 24 studies, pulled them together, totaling 53,827 patients. That's a lot. Spanning the globe, actually. Spanning Europe, the US, Africa, and Asia. So that's quite, you know, a distribution of uh, the uh, patients. And then the team analyzed data on interarm blood pressure difference and tracked the number of deaths, the number of heart attacks, and the number of strokes that occurred over a 10 year period. That's quite a long follow up, okay? So that's why I like this study. And that's why you should pay serious attention to this uh, very study. The team then went ahead to develop and validate cardiovascular risk prediction models that incorporate interarm uh, blood pressure difference. So, um, yeah, I'm gushing over the study because of the study design and the, uh, the term of follow-up, uh, which is very, very important over a 10-year period. I like that. So, what were the findings and conclusions from this study? What can we draw from this study? Well, they found that a lower threshold of 10 millimeters of mercury was clearly indicative of additional risk. So when you check the blood pressure between the arms, if it's uh, 10 millimeters of mercury or more, it's clearly indicative of additional risk. They also showed a robust evidence that a difference in blood pressure between both arms is linked to a greater risk of heart attack, stroke, and death. Okay? Pay attention very well, please. Now, the difference between uh, blood pressure between the arms indicates substantial differences in the health of the two brachial arteries. So, when you check the blood pressure between the two arms, uh, a huge dif difference between them indicates a substantial difference in the state of health of the two arteries. Uh, they also show that uh, a significant difference between the systolic blood pressure measurements in the two arms is highly suggestive of narrowing. The bigger the difference between the blood pressure uh, between the two arms, uh, the higher the risk that your arteries are becoming narrower and narrower. So what does this all mean? Uh, one of the things it means is that if we carry out the task that I'm going to be giving to you shortly, 
it means we can identify more at risk patients and those patients will receive early life-saving treatment how about that one of the things i like about this study is that is a study that is going to inspire us to identify the people who are at risk in the low to medium category because we tend to concentrate on the high risk categories but if we all do what i'm going to suggest shortly then we're going to be identifying the people who are at risk in the low to medium uh, risk category because it means we can pick up uh, these uh, problems early and then we can initiate treatment as well so what should you do next so here is what you're going to be doing next you're going to be checking your blood pressure on the two arms okay so you start off get a cuff wrapped on your left arm connect to the machine go ahead push the button check your blood pressure on your left arm note the reading and then then place the cuff on your right arm connect to the machine as usual place your arm correctly sit in the right position as i talked about in the other video push the button get your blood pressure reading on your right arm what we're interested in is the blood pressure difference between the right arm and the left arm but more importantly what we are really interested in is the systolic reading the difference in the systolic reading between the right arm and the left arm so the systolic reading is the top reading okay the top value not the bottom one the bottom one is diastolic so we want to note the difference uh, in the systolic reading from the right arm and the left arm. Now, if it is 10 or more, okay, do not panic, just relax, repeat the process again in five minutes. If we get a difference that is also 10 or more in systolic reading, when we repeat it in five minutes, do not panic, just relax, remove the cough and let it go. But, in two days time we have to repeat the process what we're looking for is consistency now when you repeat the process again in two days time and you're getting a difference of uh, a systolic blood pressure difference of 10 or more units uh, between the right and the left arm what you need to do then is make appointment to see your doctor all right do not panic make appointment to see your doctor and then when you see your doctor let him know what you found you tell him these were the readings i got uh, ordinarily, your doctor ideally should repeat uh, the process again. He's going to check the blood pressure reading on the right arm and then the left arm. And if he gets the same thing, then of course that should trigger some sort of investigation. Okay? So I'm going to leave that to your doctor what he needs to do next. Uh, it's not for me to tell him what to do. Because this is important in the sense that uh, when you have a difference of 10 or more, it is indicative that the arteries especially the important ones the arteries in the brain the the coronary arteries which is the one that supplies your heart muscle it's also possible that you know they're narrow and that means something needs to be done remember what we're trying to do here is identify the people in the low to medium category because uh, these are the people that we tend to ignore and a simple task like this okay a simple task that you can perform at home and then uh, verified by your doctor uh, is enough for us to pick up these problems early and that's the reason why i said you should be, you should watch this video all of it so that you perform this simple task by yourself at home and that will then trigger you going to see your doctor and that should uh, initiate a chain uh, of events uh, after that so that we pick up these things early and take action and here is something you should remember one in 11 of us who've got high blood pressure we've got this problem that's how common it is, okay? One in 11 of us, we've got this problem. And if you've got diabetes on top of this, then it's a lot more serious. The risk actually goes up some more. That's why it is important that you perform this task. So hopefully you got some value from this video. Uh, it's been a long video, but uh, if you got some value from this video, as usual, please give it a thumbs up. Please like the video. Uh, please share this video with your friends, family, and colleagues, as usual. I will always appreciate that. And uh, if you've got any questions, any comments regarding uh, this video, go ahead, leave your comments down below. Uh, there should be two videos on your screen now. Go ahead, click to watch any of those two videos. Uh, and I, I've enjoyed doing this video. Until next time, well, uh, this is Dr. Joe signing out. And please 
go complete the task.